Okay. Vault 7. So, as we know, at early morning a week ago, seven days ago, WikiLeaks released 8,761 documents and files, which allegedly and believably, even the CIA, did they, they said, we won't comment, but they did not deny. Um, this exposes and discloses the tactics and technologies the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency uses to hack into secure devices, systems, and communications. You know, this is the equivalent, roughly, of what we learned from Edward Snowden after he left the NSA, taking his large collection with him of these things that he felt he had an obligation to reveal to the world because he felt that this was wrong. And so the devices covered by this are pretty much everything. Uh, mobile, Android and iOS devices, routers, Windows, Mac, Linux PCs, many IoT devices from smart light bulbs all the way up through televisions. Uh, and Kellyanne tells us also microwaves. <laughs> so pretty much the works. Um, I, I will note, as many of our listeners did, that the Gibson and Squirrel appear what? as accident. Yes, the Gibson is in there as is SQRL what? as accidental name collisions uh, within the document dump. So no, <laughs> they're, they're, they're entirely different things. Okay, okay. So the big takeaway is. As you said at the top of the show, Leo, and I completely agree with you, there really was nothing hugely new here. Imagine if someone were to listen to all previous 602 weeks of security now and after doing that went out to find and collect everything that we discussed on the podcast. That's what you'd end up with. That's about what the CIA would have uh, if they had done that. That is, as I was looking through everything, there wasn't a single thing I saw that we haven't talked about. Really? Interesting. Yes. Wow. It's all – It's so, so essentially um, what this is, you know, we talked about how – I love the word porous – I think that's exactly the right analogy because something which is porous, think of like, you know, maybe like pumice or something, which is, you know, it's going to, it's not very porous, but it, it is a porous stone. So if you just put some water on it, eh, nothing's going to happen. But if you pressurize water on it, you can force some molecules through. That is to say, you know, if you really want it bad enough, you can make it happen. And that, I mean, that's the perfect model for today's security. Unfortunately, our security, and for all kinds of reasons, ends up being porous, even if it's social engineering. Unfortunately, social engineering works. You can trick someone into clicking a link. So, and if you didn't, if you didn't try to trick them, then they wouldn't have clicked it. But if you put pressure on them, by designing something so that they will, then it can happen. So, so th that's where I think we are. To me, this, this whole adventure with the CIA clearly demonstrates, um, as I just said, one of the fundamental distressing realities of today's computing and communication technologies, um, which this podcast often highlights. When our defenses are inherently soft and porous, placing pressure upon them will cause them to leak. Well-funded and highly motivated state actors, such as the NSA and CIA, can bring significant resources and thus a great deal of pressure to bear against the many technologies, none of which are particularly secure or not absolutely secure, which we use in our daily lives. Uh, and so, 
you know, I, in looking at all the coverage of this and, and reading everything, I guess maybe perhaps the most controversial aspect of this is the notion that that not a malicious hacker, but a taxpayer funded organization would be discovering and concealing zero day vulnerabilities in our systems and keeping them to themselves for their own purposes and not disclosing them uh, to their devices manufacturers.